Hey everyone, glad you're with us on the show today. We're on Keystone Lake that's about 25 to 30 minutes west-northwest of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and that's to the boat ramp. So you can easily get to the boat ramp. Never been on this lake before, but what I've heard is it has a great population of striper, and that's exactly what we're targeting today. We'll be using a variety of baits from topwater to lipless crankbaits, and hopefully put some of these nice stripers in the boat. Fox Sports Outdoors is on the air right now. You're watching the only program with weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southwest region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors. Welcome to this week's episode of Fox Sports Outdoors. I'm Andrew Upshaw, guest host for Barry this week. You know, I'm a professional bass fisherman. I fish the FLW Tour, have done that for about six years now. Fish the Classic, fish the FLW Cup. But today is gonna to be a different show. We're gonna be fishing on Keystone Lake and we're gonna be striper fishing. I've never been to this body of water before, but from what I've been told, it has a very good population of stripers. And we're gonna go use some bass tactics to hopefully put some stripers in the boat. We'll be using a variety of baits from top water to lipless crankbaits on the main lake. Hopefully you can you know, learn a few things from this week's episode that'll help you put more fish in the boat when you go striper fishing on your body of water. Also this week we'll have fishing reports from your local region from our insider reporters. In the meantime, I'm gonna get to fishing. I see a lot of fish boiling out in the water already, a lot of shad flickering. I'm ready to go try to catch some of these stripers. In the meantime, I'm going to toss it to the FSN studio for your weekend planner. If you can only pick one day to be on the water this weekend, Saturday is the one to choose with conditions listed as excellent. The Salooner tables are indicating that the peak game fish activity for the day should begin at 2.42 a.m. and 3.08 p.m. The sun will rise at 7.26 and set at 7.04. And evening skies should be bright with a moon that is 95% visible. Oh, there we go. That's a stripper. He ain't a bad one. Here we go. Pretty, pretty little stripper, but it's a nice one nonetheless. Let's get this thing unhooked. So what we did was, is we pulled up on the sandy point. We're at Keystone Lake. Wind has kind of picked up a little bit and it's blown across this point. I noticed there was three or four birds all across the sandy bank, which the shad on Keystone tend to use these sandy banks. So what we did is we pulled up here. I, I picked up a rattle trap. You know, a, a lipless crankbait is a great way to cover a lot of water and it imitates a shad. In this case, I picked up one called Gizzard Shad. It has a little bit darker back. It's early in the morning. Anytime I'm throwing a lipless crankbait down the bank, I want something that has a little darker back and a white belly early. Uh, that tends to get a lot more bites. And if you notice, I have a red hook on there. A red hook is a great thing to put on a lipless crankbait when you're going and burning the bank shallow when there's an abundance of shad. And the reason I say that is when you, when you see a lot of shad in the water, that means there's a lot of fish that are eating shad. They're gonna be blowing up on them and the fish are gonna be a little bloodier. So your shad are gonna be a little bloodier. They're gonna have a lot more wounded shad than just shad swimming around. So that's gonna give the appearance of a wounded shad, especially in shallow water. It's gonna give a little bit of color difference and something for those striper to target in on whenever they're getting ready to eat. You know, obviously this is a pretty small striper in the stand standards of what this lake has, but you know what, it was a lot of fun. And just remember, when you're burning these banks, a lipless crankbait is a great way to put more fish in the boat when you have an abundance of shad like we had this morning. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Motor Guide Trolling Motors. Motor Guide, because accuracy matters. Lawrence Electronics, celebrating 60 years of fish finding excellence. Find, navigate, dominate and Exide Technologies, powering the world forward. There's one. <laughs> 
There's one. <laughs> Got him on the tiny trap. Oh. Man. You can tell he wanted that color right there. Oh, so scared. As you can see, he ate it across the bait like that. So, what we're doing here is we have a little hump out here. It's a sandy hump. It's got a ton of bait on it. And we just pulled up here and I started fan casting this little small lipless crankbait. It's a, it's actually what they call a tiny trap. It's an eighth ounce uh, lipless bait made by Rattle Trap. But the thing is, is I started noticing the bait fish are really, really small. And so what I'm trying to do here is match the hatch the best I can. And so I went to a little bit smaller bait. This is chrome and blue. You know, one of my favorite all-time colors. But you know, more so than anything, we paid attention to the details. There's a lot of shad on the top of this hump. You know, it's still fairly early in the morning. The thing is, a really small lipless bait is going to get you a lot of bites, whether it's bass, striper, white bass, no matter what, it's going to catch a lot of fish. And that's what we really enjoy doing. Main thing is, though, always key in on shad. You know, these fish love to be around shad. They're going to be eating them and gorging on them first thing in the morning. And no better way to cover water than with a lipless crankbait. We're going to go ahead and toss it to your local fishing report. Well, it's wonderful that we've gotten some good amounts of rain in parts of the state recently that haven't had it in a while. So if you go to your favorite fishing hole in the next few days and you find the water level is up, get out that buzz bait, fish it right on the bank, you're going to catch some bass. Now the lake level at Hefner is above normal and the bass fishing is pretty good there along with really good fishing for crappie, white bass, and striper hybrids. Concentrate on the dam part of the lake, fish the points, fish the riprap. Best bait options are live minnows, soft plastic crappie jigs and three inch plastic grubs. And you can catch all those species on any one of those three types of baits. Now another really good option for this time of year is get out that rooster tail and wider chartreuse, light line, four or six pound test, light spinning gear, cast it, fish it super shallow right on the banks so you can catch a lot of different species. Of course this time of year is always gorgeous to go to the lower mountain fork river, a phenomenal trout fishery, spectacular scenery this time of year, and the wildlife department recently stocked 3,000 rainbows in there, so it just supplemented an already good fishery, making it even better. Also good trout fishing right now is the lower Illinois River, also a year-round trout fishery, but the trout fishing is good on the lower Illinois at this time. Now those trout waters will give you a good primer to get ready for some of that winter trout stockings that we do here in the state of Oklahoma. But we've got it all. We've got bass, we've got white bass, catfish, crappie, everything you can catch. You can catch here in Oklahoma, but you can't catch them if you don't go. There we go. There we go. It's a nice striper. We pulled up here on this shallow flat. And if you look around, you see a ton of birds, ton of activity picked up a top water he just spit up a shad right there it's probably a two to two and a half inch shad not a giant fish but I mean a decent striper nonetheless a lot of fun Ooh. there we go So, like I was saying, what we did here is we pulled up on the shallow flat, saw a lot of birds. One of my favorite things to do is to look for birds when I'm targeting stripers. You know, notoriously, stripers are a fish that are a very aggressive feeder. They're always going to be opportunistic. They're always going to look for shad and vulnerable situations. The fall time of the year is a great time to come out on Keystone Lake and go on these sandy flats and look for birds, look for shad up on sand. You know, they really tend to use that sand. You know, obviously that's not the biggest striper in the world, but they, they just blow up and hit the baits as hard as you could ever imagine, whether it's a lipless crankbait or a topwater plug, no matter what it is, 
it's always a lot of fun and it's a, a great way to get a, a kid on the lake and get them a lot of bites. The key though is look for these sandy banks with birds, flatter areas in the fall. This is going to put more fish in the boat and all of them are going to be about this size and a little bit bigger. Oh, there's one. There's one. That's a nicer one there. Oh, a little bigger than I thought he was. Here we go. So we were just pulled up in uh, some baby stripers. I mean, some that were three to seven, eight inches long. And this one was up there, so it just kind of goes to show you that these size are actually probably feeding on some of those smaller ones. They're super aggressive fish, so it wouldn't surprise me at all to know that this one's probably eating some of those smaller stripers and some of the shad. You know, the thing is, what we're doing here is we're looking for sandy banks with lots of birds and lots of bait. We're on Keystone Lake around Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's about 30 minutes outside of Tulsa. It's a beautiful lake. It's the first time I've ever been here. It's got a great population of stripers from everything I've heard. Guys are catching 16 to 30 pounders. I mean, there's some giant stripers out here. Hopefully, we'll put one of those in the boat before the end of the day, but you know what? These are some great fish and a lot of fun. Just make sure when you come out here, fish those sandy banks, key in on birds and bait, flatter banks, main lake. And big key there is fish the main lake because that's where those stripers are gonna feed the most. Closest to deep water that you can, we're only sitting in like three and a half foot of water. And that's what they do in the fall time of the year is they get up super dirt shallow to feed on these shad. Let's go ahead and toss it to your local region fishing report right now. Hi folks, and welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you once again by the good people at Breckland Ranch. Catering to your hunting needs, Breckland can provide you a heated blind from which to spend your day, or you may choose to chase the exotics and whitetails in a spot and stalk fashion. Providing great lodging, great food, by great people, check out Breckland Ranch for your hunts this year. Now, we're going to start right here at Little Eagle Mountain Lake, located just west of the Fort Worth Metroplex, where you'll find bass on the points and on the docks. Your dock fish are, for the most part, smaller fish, but you can catch a lot of them. Use your baits like your jigs, your Texas rigs, and your creatures under and around the docks. In the empty areas in between, throw your spinner baits and sinkos. And of course, you'll want to start your day with some top waters just to see what's going on, especially on a cloudy day like today. Now, up at Allen Henry in the Panhandle, the water temperature has cooled off quite a bit and the fish are very active. So you'll want to start your day again with the top waters and you may be able to stick with those for quite a while. As soon as that top water bite plays out, you'll want to go to your spinner baits and your sinkos. Use your white chartreuses in the spinner baits and your watermelon reds in your sinkos. And of course, your jig and pig is also always a good option around the rocks. Keep in mind that you're gonna find those fish from about the mouth of the creek to about halfway back. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you once again by Breckland Ranch. Now let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson. He's on the coast. Hi folks, Texas Outdoors Journal brings you this week's report and our October issue is now on sale on newsstands with our comprehensive annual statewide hunting forecast and fall fishing roundup. It is filled with timely pro tips for those heading to inland lakes, the coast, or a field. Pick up a copy of Texas Outdoors Journal on newsstands or subscribe at texasoutdoorsjournal.com or call 713-957-3997. Well, this is the month every angler looks forward to. Warm water temperatures and cooling fall days, plus fishing is usually pretty solid. Anglers wading and drifting the lower and middle portion of the coast along grassy shorelines or areas with scattered shell have scored with topwater baits or shrimp colored soft plastics. Now South Bay and the causeways have been the most mentioned hotspots out of Port Isabel. From the north end of the land cut, past the mouth of Baffin Bay, up to Pita Island has given up trout along the shorelines early and over grass beds during the middle of the day. Schooling redfish have added to the action. 
East Matagorda's Mid-Bay Reefs have been the hot spot for solid trout. The lower end of Galveston Bay and Sabine Lake are clearing with fishing improving. Birds are even working on the lower end of Sabine. This weekend, Saturday has a three tide schedule with two high tides and just one low. This Sunday has a double tide schedule of two high and two low tides. I'm Bill Olson and I'll see you on the coast. We're taking a quick break, but first, here are a few bonus pictures from our Costa Catch of the Week contest. These photos were not selected as winners, but we still wanted you to see some of the fantastic catches from around the region. We'll reveal this week's winner toward the end of today's program. Back in a bit. Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Tracker Boats. It's more than a boat, it's a tracker. Mercury Marine, go boldly. And Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. Oh, there's one. Oh, it's a bass. Oh, there's one. Oh, it's a bass. You can't take a bass fisherman striper fishing and expect him not to catch a bass, even if it is on accident. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, when you're throwing baits like a lipless crankbait or something like that, you're going to catch other species. And today, striper fishing, I catch a bass on a rattle trap, and I mean, a rattle trap just catches everything. I mean, nice little bass, nothing to ride home about, but Keystone Lake has a lot of bait fish. We just sat around and graphed for a few minutes just to see what we could find, and there's bait from one end to the other, but they all are on the same kind of banks, these sandy banks. You know, right here we pulled up, and as you can see, there's one bird left in the background, but there was like six or seven along this bank. Very first cast with a trap, caught a really nice bass. You know, the cool thing about Keystone is it's right outside of Tulsa. Tulsa has a lot of great attractions, a lot of cool things to do in downtown Tulsa, and you also have fishing 30 minutes away. I can't remember how many lakes are around Tulsa, but there's a ton of them. Keystone being one of them, it has a great striper population. We've caught a bunch today. But in the meantime, let's check out your fish report from your local region and see how they are catching fish around where you are. Hey friends, Cajun Phil here with your Fox, Louisiana fishing report. I tell you what, woohoo, it has been good. I'm, it don't get no better than right now, friends. I'm telling you, we had five boats yesterday. One of the boats went out, they caught nothing but speckled trout. They came up with a limit of 45 trout. What's happening right now is we've been having a little cool snaps off and on. Whenever that wind blows out of the north, it blows the water out of the marsh. The shrimp follow them out. The birds start pouncing on the shrimp. Tells us where we fish. And when we see the birds we throw out there, we've been whacking and stacking them. We've been throwing mostly a Rockport Rattler a jig head. We've been throwing it in a quarter ounce. And we've been throwing what we call a fish bite plastic. And we've been doing really good. But you know, it's not just here on Calcasieu Lake. We get getting reports from all of our guides. Bill Lake down in Homa. He's catching speckled trout on one day, redfish the next day. He's doing great. Red RDs down at Shelby. Brent's doing really good. John Falderman down around Slidell catching lots of fish on Lake Pontchartrain. Fishing's good all across Louisiana right now. As far as bass fishing goes, Calcasieu River is finally clearing up, catching some good fish there. Buzz baits and topwater early in the morning, late afternoon, middle of the day, little creature plastic baits, but pitching right next to the trees. You're going to pick up some nice bass right there. Uh, we've been fishing around uh, Parkside Marina and the West Fork of the river. Been doing good up there. Water's really pretty. We actually fish about the boat dock catching something there too. 
be sure to join Fox Sports Outdoors again next week, Thursday at 5.30, or catch the repeat airing Saturday morning at 8. And you can always watch the latest episode in full HD on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Plus, catch up on all past episodes by clicking the archive button. And see lots of our how-to and product videos by selecting the how-to button. Join our online fishing community. Just click the like button on our Facebook page for access to daily posts with lots of fishing news, videos, and frequent giveaways. And stay up to date with all the latest fishing information and photos by following our Twitter feed. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Lose, fueled by passion, driven by innovation. Feel the difference. Gene LaRue Bass Baits and Bobby Garland Crappie Baits, the leaders in soft plastic lures innovation. And Nitro Performance Fishing Boats, champions aren't born, they're made. Welcome back to the show, everyone. It's time for the Ask the Pro question, your chance for advice from professional anglers. This week, Jeff writes, how about some boater safety tips for a new boat owner? For a few insights, we checked with Bassmaster Elite Angler Ish Monroe. First boat you ever own, first and foremost, wear a life jacket. I don't care from the time that you step on that dock to the time you step off of that dock, you're wearing a life jacket. That is most, first and foremost, very important. Secondly, is making sure that your kill switch is connected to your life jacket every single time that that big motor is running. I mean, safety is the first and foremost, safe boating is the one thing that you should pay more attention to, you know, making sure you have a whistle, making sure that you have a throw cushion, making sure that you have a rope, making sure you have an extra change of clothes when you're out there, regardless if it's hot or cold, having that extra change of clothes because as the first time boat owner, you're going to make some mistakes and you're going to fall in the water. People think us pros don't fall. We still fall in the water to this day being pro anglers and I spent over 200 days in a boat, so safety First and foremost, reading the owner's manual, wearing a life jacket, and connecting that kill switch. Thank you, Ish. If you have something to ask one of the pros, just visit our website, follow the Ask the Pro link, and let us know. Now let's see which big fish picture wins someone a new pair of sunglasses on the Costa Catch of the Week. This week's winner in the Costa Catch of the Week contest is... Larry Anderson of Mustang, Oklahoma, shown his nine pound, four ounce largemouth bass he caught at Lake Elmer Thomas in Oklahoma. To enter the contest, go to foxsportsoutdoors.com, click the Coast to Catch box on the right side of the homepage, and follow the instructions to send in your big fish photo. You could win a new pair of Costas, and you see all the Costa sunglasses at their website. Just go back to our site, click the Costa logo, you can see all the frames and lens styles, including the styles I'm wearing today called Motu. Today on Keystone Lake, I used a variety of techniques and patterns to land our fish. First, I started the morning with a Stutter Step 4.0 in the Pro Blue color. This is a rattle trap bait, makes a lot of noise, and it stays in one place when you walk it. The stripers really love this. Once the topwater bite kind of died, I went to a trio of rattle traps. I first started with an eighth ounce with a, a loose spinning reel to just try to catch some fish in a chrome color. Then I went to a quarter ounce chrome black pattern which actually turned out to be the best one of the day. And finally I went to a half ounce in a gizzard shack color. I primarily threw the half ounce gizzard shack color which is a white and a darker back when it was still a little bit lower light and it's actually what I caught the only largemouth bass of the day on. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Fox Sports Outdoors. I hope you learned how to catch them and find them on Keystone Lake. I sure had a great time. Barry's going to be back next week. Thanks for watching.